Hello, this is Bern, and in today's video, I'm gonna be answering the question, should you really be dating a younger man? Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn how you can attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or silly techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. Listen, the answer to the question, should you be dating a younger man, is not as simple to answer as it seems. I'm not here to encourage you to do it or discourage you to do it. What I want to do instead is give you my five most important factors that you need to be focusing on if you want to make sure this experience is fulfilling versus a painful one. My first statement on the matter is that you need to be aware that men take longer to mature than women in general. I know there's exceptions to the rule, but for the most part, guys' brains take more time to mature than women's brains. Guys have a different biological clock inside that makes them not have to mature as early as women. And there's multiple things that play into this. A recent study uh, from the UK, maybe 2014 or 15, showed that women reach uh, maturity age at uh, 32, full maturity at 32, and guys mature at 43. That's, 11 year, that's an 11-year gap. Which is why sometimes if you date a guy that's slightly older than you, things might work out, not necessarily in the worst of ways, but here's something to think about. The first element that you need to be really focusing on if you want to date a younger guy is how big is that age gap? Because if you want lifelong partnership, and let's say for example, statistics for marriage, if you marry a dude that's one year younger than you, you have a 3% higher likelihood of getting divorced than if you marry a guy that's your same age. If you marry a guy who is five years uh, different from you, from, uh, from your age, then there's an 18% uh, more likelihood to get divorced. And this goes either way. And if you marry someone who is 10 years age gap from you, there's a 39, almost 40% chance of getting divorced. And this is if you don't take into account other factors that make it more challenging. For example, if it's your second marriage, then it's even higher likelihood of getting divorced. So as you can see, there is a reason why bigger age gaps don't make it sometimes as much as people who are closer in age. It has to do with the factors I'll be describing to you right now. So if you're thinking right now, there's a guy that's really connecting to me and I feel so special and so seen by him. One of the things that I want you to think about is what is your goal for this relationship? Do you want to have fun? Do you want to experience some uh, <laughs> Stella got her groove back? for a while and then go back into serious dating or do you want a lifelong partner? My hallucination, if you're watching me right now, is that, especially because I talk about different things than other coaches and other people who share themes uh, of love and intimacy and attraction share, is that you probably want a lifelong partnership, you want a best friend, you want a lover, you want a spiritual equal, you want a guy who can really be there in good times and bad times. And if that's the case, then you need to pay attention to, to the age gap. If the guy is 10 years or more younger than you, it can work, but there's a high likelihood that it won't. And for the reasons that I'm about to describe right now, the second uh, thing that you need to be focusing on right now, which is super important, is what is the life stage that he is on? And by that I mean, where is he right now in his career? Where is he in terms of goals for himself and for his life? What does he seriously enjoy for fun? What is his life purpose? Has he found it? Is he on a path of getting there or not? So I'm, I'm gonna talk about children later, which is an, a, a category in and of itself that's significant enough to make or not make things work. But for right now, think about it. If, he's, if you're far more advanced in your career and he's just about to get started in this grind that you've overcome, many years ago, and you're more on the, I enjoy career, but I want to have more fun, and I want to have more balance, and he's just about to get into the working 10, 12 hour days, <laughs> then that might be a factor that affects the quality of your time. Same thing, what does he do for fun? If he's into the things you're into, that might be a lot more likely the things in work than if he enjoys video games and you hate them. Or if he has goals that have nothing to do with where you see your life going. The life purpose one is really important because a guy is gonna be able to offer you something in some ways proportional to what he's doing for himself, what he's doing in his life, and how clear he is on his path. The more unclear he is about what he's here to do, the more unlikely he is to offer you what you need because he has to figure that shit out first to be someone he feels proud of. So think about that when you think of guys that you're dating, if he's someone who's really early in his development, career, 
and goals versus he's more advanced on that area. Next area of consideration is children. And I split this up into two different categories. The first one is, do you want children? And the second one is, do you have children? Let's start with the first one. If you want children, and let's say you're in your 40s and you're connecting with a guy who's 32, you're really on the verge of hurting yourself for the most part. Here's why. A guy who's 32 isn't typically thinking, I want to make a child right now. That's my highest goal in life. He wants to focus on other things and he has plenty of time. He has 30 more years to make this thing happen. You don't. Biologically speaking, you're getting to the end of the time where you can safely have children. So if you are of the age of having children and you really want them, unless you connect with someone who's really hungry for that and it's going to be a unicorn versus the regular guy, then by connecting with someone younger, you're really hurting your chances of being a mom. Unless you end up deciding that you want to adopt and the guy is so amazing that he really wants that in the future and you're really willing, willing to wait maybe three, four, five, six years to make that dream come true. Now, the second part of this is, do you have children? And if you have children, then what is the type of relationship that you want him, not at the beginning, but eventually to have with your children? Is, do your kids have a strong father figure and you want him to be the, the fun uncle? Uh, do you want him to be sort of father figure for them? Do you want him to participate full on in their life? Do you want him to be a, a distant uh, friend to them? Because he has to have the kind of connection to children that would make you A, proud to have him as your guy and B, him being a good role model to your kids. If this is gonna be one of those situations where he wants you despite your children instead of because of them, you might be hurting your chances in ways that you can't even comprehend right now. If he doesn't understand what having children is, he's not going to get, for the most part, why you have such a strong focus and such a strong priority for your kids. So again, can it work? It can, but it makes it challenging if the guy isn't really kid-oriented, if he isn't mature enough to figure out the type of relationship he wants to have, or if you feel like it's the fun type of dude, but you would be kind of horrified if your son, for example, grew up to be like him. You may not be super excited, and that's not necessarily the best sign that he's the best guy for you long-term in the future. Next category of evaluation is friend compatibility. You've heard the phrase, you don't marry a guy, you marry his family. Or you don't marry a woman, you marry her family. Well, friends are part of the extended family, right? And what you want to find out, uh, and you'll develop this, if, you're, if you date the guy, especially exclusively, you're gonna figure out at some point, do the type of things that he wants to do with his friends, are those the type of things you really enjoy? Or are you finding like a strong clash of cultures, clash of personalities, clash of fun when you go out with them. If you go out with his friends, do you feel like at home? Or do you feel like this is like a different era, a, a different kind of, this is different situation, different dynamic, different types of conversation. So the friendship situation is one that makes it really important. Same thing, when he goes out with your friends, does he fit in? Is he having fun? Or is he feeling like, kind of like a dread? You enjoy time with them, but when it comes down to the most important people in his life, especially friendships, if that's a mismatch, then it makes it way harder for this to be sustainable long-term. The fifth category of consideration is income and financial choices. You might find it really alluring that you're very established in your career and you're just getting his bearings. But at some point, he might not feel super excited about that. He might not feel like he has a strong voice or a strong ability to do things for you that he really wants. Now, again, I left this to the, till the end because I don't think it's the most important consideration. I think it plays a part in the dynamic, in the masculine and feminine. If, you feel, if he constantly feels like he, he's at a loss, if he can't take you out and do the things that he, you really enjoy doing because he's not making the money to do that yet, then it might be a situation where it works initially but it ends up not working later on. You need to have a really strong guy who either is really ambitious and going forward in his career and has financial choices or you need to not really care about that and understand that at some point he might find it somewhat demoralizing to not be able to offer something beyond the emotional, which has to do with taking you out, taking you on trips, doing fun things of that nature. Last thing I'll say, which is not a category of consideration, but I want to make sure that if you connect with a guy who's younger than you and you're feeling excited and some of these things, he passes the test, the age gap is not great, uh, there's, there's, a, there's an age gap, but it's not significant enough where you feel he's in a different life stage, the child situation is something that actually works, either because you don't want children if he's much younger than you, or you have children and he's a mature guy that you feel can really play the part that would be encouraging and a role model for your kids. 
if you feel like he has uh, his friends and your friends are compatible and that you genuinely enjoy your time with them, not just by yourself when you're with them, and the income and financial choices is not a huge disparity, the next thing that I'll ask you to consider is the last thing you want to do is feel like you're in a mother role. Guys might feel compelled initially to have someone who feels really confident about themselves and who knows the world better than they do and can circle them around a couple of times. They might feel excited about it. But if you start playing a motherly role, that's not a good thing in a relationship. So my strongest thing is date men unexclusively, take longer to get to know them, take longer to connect physically with them because that's something that might start messing with your mind and your biochemistry in a way that might blind you to see the reality of what's taking place. And then make a choice for yourself. This can work, but it's not as easy as the trend lets it seem that it works. And it's something that really needs consideration and needs thoughtfulness. Hope this is helpful and useful to you. If it is, and you want to learn how you can attract your ideal life partner uh, in a stronger way and connect with conscious men, develop an active plan for dating, then first link on the description of this video will allow you to do just that. Just go to the first link, you'll see a page that looks like this. Enter your name and email and you can start watching my free masterclass right away. If you enjoyed this video, click like or thumbs up. <laughs> Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. And last but not least, if you're struggling to create a connection that's meaningful and you know that you've been watching videos for a while, you've been reading books, you've been doing the law of attraction, you've gone to therapy, and things don't seem to be changing fast enough, then you might highly benefit from hand-holding and coaching. And if you'd like for me to help you, second link on the description will allow you to apply to work with me. If we're a fit, I'll let you know what the working with me is all about. Thank you so much for connecting with me. Write down in a comment below what was the biggest takeaway of this video for you. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.